Hello everyone and welcome back to RGUTV. Today we're talking to Hannah Patterson, a recent painting graduate from Grey School of Art. And we're going to be talking about her degree show and her process and everything in between. So I'd like you to all welcome Hannah to the chat. Okay, um, well I'm Hannah and um, I studied painting at Grey School of Art. Uh, so graduated this year. Um, and now moved back down to Glasgow, where I originally stayed before studying at Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, did you study anything prior to coming to Grey's or did you just go straight to Grey's after school? Yeah, came straight from high school. So do you want to tell me a little bit about your, your, maybe your process? Like how do you go about your practice? Like tell me a little bit more about what you paint and what you do. Yeah. Well, I kind of go between painting and sculpture. Um, I'm more um, familiar with painting than sculpture. Um, sculpture just happened more around my third year of my course. Uh, but I really like trying to combine the two um, if possible. So that's kind of like the structure it takes physically. Um, but do you want to know like about my theme? Yeah, um, so actually when I read over your artist statement, I was quite intrigued by um, the, the fact you're focusing on like behaviours and OCD and things like that. So if you want to go into that, that would be perfect. Yeah, just talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, so I basically in third year, I started looking at the idea of feeding and what we feed ourselves. Um, and that led me on to looking at earthly materials, uh, specifically salt um, in my third year, because it's something that our bodies need so that we can survive, but we don't produce it naturally. So we have to uh, feed it to ourselves and too much and we die because it just overloads <laughs> our system. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like that balance of how human beings interact with materials and how these things that are supposed to be good for us can turn into obsessions that lead to unhealthy um, and da sometimes dangerous outcomes, um, whether that be mentally or physically. And it's sort of that whole idea can sort of symbolize a whole range of concepts in in life you know you could associate it to anything and to every single person which is why I love looking at this subject and for fourth year I sort of um just wanted to put the salt sort of on the back burner a little bit um and look more into the soap side of things and that search for purity um and yeah basically kind of gradually uh, came to studying uh, the behaviours of people with OCD because I thought it just summed up really like perfectly what I was trying to say um, about other things as well. Um, so yeah, it was sort of that uh, whole idea of obsession with trying to find this purity that's not real. Um, and it leads to all these dangerous um, outcomes. Um, so I looked at the OCD um, physical elements to it, like the washing of the hands and constantly like getting your hands cracked and red um, and you, you start to lower your immune system as well because you start covering things up, you don't touch surfaces and everything, which I thought was kind of really appropriate for COVID as well. Um, I didn't mean it to be, but it just happened. So I took the opportunity to look at that. Um, and then also the mental side of it is how we just become trapped in this cycle. Um, we can't really find a way to get out. And we in instead of seeing the dangers, we sort of just become blinded to it and s sort of make them an idol um, to try and reach. So that's basically my process yeah no I, I was really interested in the artist statement um because like when you go in the room you're kind of met with these these artworks on the wall 
And at first glance, you're kind of thinking, oh, okay, what's this? But then when you read the, the statement, you're like, ah, oh, okay. And like, as you go deeper into it, you find, you find more detail in them. Um, particularly the one that's on the right hand wall in the middle. Um, I might butcher the name of this entirely. Is it called Golgotha? Yep, Golgotha. Yep. Mask drawing. I was really intrigued by that because when I first looked at it, I was like, I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking at. It's really cool though. And then when I researched further into your Instagram and you described it, but um, do you want to talk about it a bit about yourself? Um, what you, how you, that work came about? Yeah, so um, this was like, I did that piece after we all left the art school. Um, and so I was sort of limited at that point to this roll of paper that I had left and a couple of acrylic paints and my pencil. Um, and I, I really just like wanted to take the opportunity to look at the COVID situation and people with OCD within this situation as well, because it's difficult for people who are not diagnosed with OCD, but especially people with OCD, this is like almost like a nightmare to be in. Um, and so I kind of just uh, took these face masks that I seen everybody wearing and it's it's sort of like a visual rep representation of what um, people with OCD go through. They try and sort of um, cut themselves off from anything else in the world, but um, it's it can also be dangerous if you you know you overdo it. Like especially if you've got breathing issues as well, um, it can cause marks on your face, and it's it's also that symbol of what you're choosing to breathe in what you're choosing to feed your body as well um, and so I kind of just started with the face mask and I was just playing I had the face mask and I was just playing about with them and it was on the floor and it looked like um, a skeleton shape I thought oh that would be perfect because it sort of links the body and what I'm trying to say um, so I just started um, piling them up and I just drew, drew sketches on photoshop um because it's just easier for me to do it that way and sort of to visualize it and then I did some actual like drawing sketches um and so yeah just started um drawing away all these face masks on top of each other and it's I use the ones that have got like the metal bit at the nose so it kind of looks more brutal and more like a almost like a surgery aspect to it uh, with the metal pins and everything um, but yeah, as it went on, it started just looking like the spine um, of something, like the, a corpse that had been left. And that's why I called it Golgotha, which means the place of the skulls, um, which I thought was just perfect for what I was trying to, to say in that piece. Mm -hmm. No, you definitely you get that, especially once you, you read into it. And I, I saw what it was and I was like, oh, wow. And it ties in very beautifully. It's a very nice drawing, nice drawing piece. Thank you. Um, Besides that, on the, the right hand side of it, there was this bright like red square tiley type thing with like little objects inside. I'm not best at descriptions, I'm sorry. <laughs> but would you like to maybe talk a bit about that piece as well? Like what was that messaging behind that? Yeah, so that one's called Spacious Infirmary. Um, and this is um, half of my virtual degree show that you, you see is all Photoshop concepts. So it's sculptures that I was beginning to make. Um, and literally the week of COVID, it just stopped. Mm -hmm. It stopped everything. So I made Photoshop um, mock-ups of them. And um, yeah, so this one is just taking the, the tiles of the bathroom and sort of linking that idea of the washing with the soap and the salt as well. Um, so I took that tile um, concept because it's, it's from the bathroom, but I also found them very like, they're all together, but they're isolated in their own section, um, which kind of gets that idea of isolation. But yeah, that came from the, basically the, the hand washing instructions. Um, as it was going down and down, I basically took out the text and the imagery and replaced it with the soap is what it would be inside and preserving these health objects inside the soap. Um, so I had a, like face masks, plasters, sponges, anything and everything that just like the normal uh, people 
uh, everyday people would use um, nowadays. <laughs> so, um, and sort of putting them in these soaps as they're trapped in the soap. Uh, and the soap gets, it starts white and then it gradually gets further and further down to a very dark blood red to sort of show that decline in health and that danger that people are um, sort of working towards unintentionally. Wow, that's a lot, like, that's a lot of information for, like, one piece of work, and that's really cool, actually, to, like, discuss that and hear more about it. Um, going on, like, the, what you're saying about if, if lockdown hadn't happened and you were able to make these sculptures and then having to transition onto, like, Photoshop and stuff, was that something you're familiar using prior to lockdown, or did you have to teach yourself, like, a new skill set almost to, to present your work? No, I used Photoshop in high school. Um, I started learning on it around about fourth year in high school. Um, so, and I've used I've used Photoshop at all my time at art school as well. Um, I I really like I use it for like almost composition sketches. Um, so I tend to do like sketches and then we'll scan it in and then work about with it on Photoshop. Um, and I also do other things on Photoshop because I do do like a bit of uh, graphic design as well. Um, so yeah, it was really uh, familiar with me, which is a blessing. Otherwise, I, I don't think I would have been able to to do that and mm -hmm. would have had to rethink my ideas um, a little bit. But that was, it allowed me at least to show what I was planning on doing uh, with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it sort of um, took a lot of, uh, memory space on my photoshop as well so i did have some troubles where i just had to shut the computer off and then come back to it later so that yeah those were sort of struggles that i hadn't used but had before in photoshop because i didn't do that much with it um at one time but yeah apart from that it was and I, I kind of got the the gist of uh how to how to make them on photoshop mm -hmm. yeah i mean for my for my class where there's a lot of illustrators they, they, they love doing their work physically and then the thought of turning it digital they were just like ah that's not it's not in their realm of like knowledge so it was quite a struggle for them going into the the lockdown um in terms of working from home were you quite impacted not having your studio space to work in if you like doing like large-scale drawings and paintings was it was it quite hard to transition into to a working from home environment yeah, um, I think like most of us, it was sort of almost a shock that this was going to happen, especially to, you know, the four years as well. You know, we were just so focused on degree show that we sort of put everything else that could possibly disrupt it at the back of our minds. And then it just happened. And I sort of took a week after we all left, I sort of took the week to do nothing. Um, because obviously I had planned these sculptures to do and I obviously couldn't do them anymore and so it was trying to come up with a new plan um, would I just ditch them and try and do something else or try and work out how to represent them um, in a degree show because I knew we would have some form of degree show not quite the virtual experience that I thought that we now have but more of like just a, a normal website um, so yeah, I kind of just took that time to sort of mourn that I wouldn't have that creative atmosphere because um, it really does impact you on how you create things um, and just having everybody else's like subtle influences and opinions and just seeing everybody else's work, it can really change your mindset. And then I was in student hall, so I had a, a small room, not being able to experiment the way I did because um, I do like making messes as well um especially with sculptures and just throwing paint on but i couldn't do that so i had to really think about how i was gonna get around this especially my halls stopped accepting mail and so i couldn't order anything in no new materials or anything and so that just made it even worse i got that at like the end of the week just before i started doing more work and i was like oh another issue <laughs> so it was having to work with the materials that I had um, but I managed to get a couple of things 
about a week, a week and a half or so before the hand in date. So I was able to finish off ones that I really wanted to do, but I thought I wouldn't be able to do, but did get to do, thankfully. That's, 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 you wouldn't want to like take on almost like that's a lot um not even just being limited by space but being limited by materials that's just oh. um <laughs> going back to your your space at the degree show um there was a work on the wall in the back left corner and it looked like a series of very small drawings was it of like a doll or something similar could be wrong saying that um but do you want to talk about that that piece of work yeah so that one's called 13 sacrifices mm -hmm. um and that is the one that i didn't think i was going to be able to do but thankfully got to do because i managed to order in my solder and iron and uh, basically they're just they're very small 12 by 12 centimeters pieces of card each and it's again that tile and repetition aspect that I keep throughout my work um, that's sort of my um, trademark if you like of my work and um, yeah it's basically hazmat suits but for babies and uh, <laughs> yeah the babies are not in them but they look like they are but it's actually just a black face um, so it's sort of getting that idea of absence and taking away that innocence that we've naturally assigned to a, a child, a, a young child. Um, and so I used the soldering iron to basically burn the image and um, instead of drawing or painting. So it was a new technique. I'd never done it before. Um, but it was really enjoyable. I really enjoyed uh, that and we'll do it definitely in other projects. It does take a while to do, which is why I decided to keep them small as well. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's basically babies uh, or hazmat suits and they start at one position and they slowly move around to another position, which is naturally the movement that a baby takes for during like labor. Um, and it was sort of this whole idea of, um, this innocence and then as the, uh, these um, parents from these stories that I would hear like where they would overprotect their child, um, clean surfaces, not being allowed to go out, everything, not being allowed to play in dirt, their immune system, the child's immune system just wouldn't develop properly and so they would actually end up with severe illnesses later on in life and so the parents with good intentions actually brought the um, thing they didn't want to reality and so that's why it's like a hazmat so it's over protective uh, it's constricting and so basically before they even get a chance to experience life it's sort of burned away almost as mm -hmm. yeah that's what i was trying to get at with that piece it's really interesting <laughs> series and how you've laid it out i was like oh this is this that you had to come quite close to it to really see it but i think that makes it more impactful because you said it's just a small piece um so yeah no it's really interesting um did you play about with the scale of your paintings at all like um i know that some people like it might have been a very small drawing but because of the limit like there's no limitation on the size really in the new virtual space uh, you could make your paint in any size. Did you experiment with that at all or did you try and keep it as true to form as possible? Well, I did keep it true to form. Um, some things I made a, just a little bit bigger and then obviously speaking with my tutors, they wanted me to keep it true to size as you would see it. And so um, certain things that were maybe a little bit bigger got changed back to the scale that they were. Um, Certain things I think for maybe impact on what it would feel like in real life, I would have liked to have been maybe a bit bigger, maybe some things a bit clearer, but um, it's not like disastrous or anything. You can still see mm -hmm. uh, all the pieces and they all work together. That's cool. No, I wasn't actually sure. I was just thinking that when I said that, I was like, actually maybe you might have had a different brief in terms of like for painting, if you want to sell a painting it probably does need to be the right size. Whereas Comdes, they were just like, do what you want. And we're like, okay. Um, yeah, I do. I think, yeah, um, other courses got different um, briefs on, on what they could do with the space. Like some of them 
are pure, like crazy. You see like water in the room and everything, uh, where our, ours was more of a direction towards a normal gallery space. Um, so I think it was more just to draw attention on the paintings because it's hard to make them stand out and some of the more vibrant spaces that work for other things. Mm, definitely. But yeah, um, considering if you go back to what things might have been like if COVID hadn't happened, um, how would you have had your degree show space if you, if you could have had a physical one and you could have produced all your work the way you were intending in the first place? So you had mentioned sculpture and stuff like that, so it might be very different. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, it's hard to think of what it would be like, because um, obviously we have to wait till we get signed a room and sometimes that just drastically changes a layout. But I think it would have been more atmospheric. It's probably what I would have wanted to do, um, sort of create like a health, almost hospital-like um, atmosphere um, with like a bit of eeriness um, with it as well. So like I don't even know like if I would have as many finals in the, the final one as, as well just because of the layout of the room it might be more impactful to reduce the number of artworks. Um, but yeah I think the major change probably just would have been the atmosphere of the real thing and the height of things and being able to look up instead of looking at a screen really um i think that's that's the sad bit that i missed about a physical show because i really do like trying to create some sort of emotion or atmosphere in my work and especially together as well mm -hmm. yeah um i suppose you had quite a, a strict brief on how you were building your space but did you did you have a lot of times like plan what you were going to do with it? Did you like visualise what you wanted? And tell me about how you managed to build your space, like what did you do to, to make it feel like your own and with all your work in the best way possible for you? It was kind of uh, difficult to sort of work with the room. Um, I, I think like my laptop especially just I don't think it could cope with it, mm -hmm. uh, that programme quite a lot. So it would often crash on me as well. Um, I feel like I needed something physical to try and make it mine. And um, I tried different layouts. Uh, not everything uh, worked. I think the final one was what worked best um, and sort of just let the artworks stand out on their own individually, but also together when you step back. Um, but yeah, I think like with, I tried like different lights to try and create like an atmosphere as well, but again, problems with the, the program, unfortunately. Um, but I think like just keeping it a natural, uh, light in any way would help me to see what it would look like in the, uh, Gray's School of Art, like, cause that would be normal lighting anyway, normal white walls. And so I just decided to sort of not try and make it atmospheric because I knew it's not really going to happen without the physical elements involved and so I just tried to create something that would look like a exhibition space maybe in like a hospital room or something like that and um, so changing the flooring to look like hospital flooring um, as well. That's really cool actually yeah, yeah. tying it all into the, the main theme of your, your work. Interesting. Um, go on to maybe your your inspirations for the year. Any like artists that you've you've followed and they've inspired you a lot, or um, maybe even just the general pandemic probably inspired you a fair bit as well. But that probably ties into your your um your theme. But yeah, any artists you can think of that really stood out to you? Uh, this is where I forget every single artist <laughs> that I've ever known. <laughs> Um, I had like a, a good mix of um, different artists, different artist styles. The majority of my influences are not so much painters, they're more sculptors and people that do installation work. Um, I just find like the atmosphere that they create or the materials they use, there's just something different that inspires me, but inspires me to make a painting. It's very, it's very weird. Um, 
So especially like the um, the Art Povera movement, um, Jana Kunelis, um his work with like materials and repetition um, is something that I really enjoyed and really tried to make work, but in a, a painting sense. No, that sounds, that sounds good. Um, what else? Um, there's other works in the room. Um, I don't know if you want to pick maybe another piece of artwork that you want to talk about a bit more. Yeah, so there's a big one right at the back. Um, it's a diptych and that one's called Testament um, and that was focusing more on the um, idealism aspect of my topic and uh, basically I just took the shapes of the salt mine where the cathedral is um, and expanded them upwards. I did try them small as well so I've got really small ones because it was kind of relating it all into that religious aspect of it and um, looked at like some with hope and gold leaf um, sort of just that um, look of being an idol and the soap replacing um, this religious aspects so that it itself then becomes the religion and something that people then can sometimes unhealthily um, obsess over and and again look for uh, this this purity that is might not actually be there or or be a false purity um, when the purity is somewhere else. The, the painting on the left, they gather, is that correct? Um, it's about people mourning. So does that connect maybe into like that religious idea, maybe? Do you want to talk about that uh, one as well? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so they all kind of like have, like, it's, it's, it's a few of them that definitely have that really subtle religious aspect in it. Um, and that definitely, that one definitely links to that as well. Um, and it was basically these doctor's surgery coats and uh, they kind of look like these mysterious figures with all the black and it, it kind of it looked like a morning scene um and so it was all it's, it was basically about this purity itself something that's a uh, true purity that's supposed to be healthy and good for you um basically just coming to mourn that this person has went off in another direction to look for maybe a false comfort, a false purity. Um, like you see in the behaviours with people of OCD, like uh, people who don't have it, they might mourn that they can't maybe help them um, as well. And they kind of just keep going down that path. So um, that was kind of the, the, the health aspect and the the religious aspect of uh, the topic that I was looking at. Sounds really cohesive, like your whole year, it very much ties together and it works really nicely. It's really nice to like talk to you and like hear your thoughts behind each piece. Like I just think that sells the artwork more when you get a, like to talk to the artist about it. So it'd be really nice. Um, so any plans now after graduating, like what's the next step for you? <laughs> Well, I'm now back home um, in Glasgow and I think the next step is first, I think just getting a, a job to get financially supported uh, for myself and sort of just take this research forward. Um, I, I've got the David Mitchie travel scholarship, so I'll be going um, to the salt mines in Austria and Poland. So that's something that I'm planning towards and spending my time researching at the moment on what to do. And after I go there, come back and make a new project and um, hopefully for an exhibition. And so that's kind of like, that's as far as I've gotten at the moment. It's just sort of taking it day by day because it's obviously uncertain circumstances at this moment in time. Um, but yeah, the first aspect before going on this trip is just looking for a job and um, basically just developing my art career as it, it goes goes on. Yeah. 
sounds really good actually like the whole progression that you've had from from third year and fourth year and then onwards and upwards and it sounds sounds really positive and I don't even think that there's a better time to be an artist than now especially with all the cultural issues that are going on and the fact that you've studied and done a lot of stuff about um, health and OCD and behaviours around the pandemic it must be such an interesting time to be studying something like that so yeah I think your work's done really well reflecting on that. It was a lucky time uh, we always joke it was almost like a pro prophecy or something like that <laughs> the yeah. way it was worked out um, I definitely don't want to waste this time like it's an unfortunate time but it really links into my work um, so I'm really taking this time just to gather all like the articles I can all the behaviours as well like when I'm out I'm looking at the behaviours of everyone interacting with each other, what they're doing and not doing. Because that's what really interests me is just how human beings work and how we're working with the earth, how we're working with earthly materials. Um, and the, the good and the bad side of that, because there's always a balance in that. And that's kind of the aspect that I want to, to research further. It's really interesting. I look forward to seeing what you get up to. So yeah, mine's is like really easy to find. I'm Hannah Patterson, Patterson Art on everything. Um, Patterson with one T, that's often a mistake. But yeah, I've got a website, Instagram and Facebook page all under Hannah Patterson Art. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you about your work. Thank you for having me. This has been so good. Yeah, it's been amazing. Right. Thank you so much.